everyone, Werewitch here with Harry, who has promised to keep his comments to a minimum for these quick tip videos. Uh, what did I promise to? Let's get straight to the tips. Okay, so here's the first thing. I know you're frustrated. If you're already watching this, you're looking for help. I want you to know that you've got this. You can do this. In V Rising, the boss fights test your understanding of the game and how well you can apply this knowledge to the fight. The following checklist will add as much weight with your gained know-how to tip the scales in your favor. What one method used for beating a V-Blood may have worked great, may not work for another. It's a matter of finding out what you're missing. Let's go over the checklist together. Do you have the highest possible blood percentage available to you? Does it synergize with your gear or spell loadout? Should it even synergize? Or do you need to go with the more balanced approach? Are you using any crafted or merchant bot potions, any enchanted brew, potion of ferocity, or the best healing potion available? Have you beat all the bosses previous to this one? Have you tried taking out another boss level adjacent, or even a higher boss that you can beat that might unlock a component to make better gear? Have you attempted the fight during a blood moon to gain a little extra damage? Or have you encountered the fight during the day when you should have fought it at night? Are you using the environment to your advantage? And I do mean everything. Is there a boulder, a rock, a nearby monster, a tree, a pack of nearby wolves that could distract a wandering boss for you to get a couple more hits in? Have you tried a different spell loadout, a different weapon or armor? The time you take now to learn other skills will pay dividends at a later boss fight, or all of them. Can you unlock gear or item recipes on your research, study, or Athenaeum? You can also buy missing recipes for merchants as well. Okay, one last thing. Repetition is key. Keep trying. You may pick up on mechanics that I or someone else might miss. If you keep trying and learn something, anything from your attempts, then you aren't failing. You're just learning where to place the knife. Do not give up. We believe in you. Yeah, if Witch can do it, you definitely can. So that's the checklist. Let's look at the fight. Okay, so this is like the fifth attempt. Here we go again. I can taste my bloodline in the air. A rare treat in a challenger. My legion stands ready for my return. I will not tolerate this delay. There is no I have a real problem with these axes that he throws out or the spinning blades. I walked right into that. Okay, when this red ring shows up, you can either concentrate on getting some damage off, but you just want to make sure that you have your veil up so that you can jump through that ring to get out. I think if you can get off more damage in that moment and move towards him, that's for the best. You will learn to obey. In the okay, here's another point where you want to make sure that your veil's ready to go. Right at the end, right there. Delicious Otherwise, lunch. he's going to catch you every single oh, time. Good grief. That was dumb. Really dumb. Run, little welcome. <laughs> in. Got a floater. Let's grab it. An imitation. This is what it means to be king. Gonna switch out. Second phase. Endless hatred. We want to get these crystals down as 
quickly as possible. It is more important, in my opinion, to get those crystals down than it is to be putting out damage on Drac in this moment. I am the master of blood and shadow. Get over there to that crystal. Fail through. Probably should have popped off the heel back there. Definitely a balance here, getting those crystals down. I'll also throw in a couple jabs at them when you can, when you've got an opening. Those bats telegraph where they're going to go when the lasers come up. That was a cocky heel. We need to get to that crystal. Shadows. That was a good spear there. Staying closer to the edge is definitely a better thing to do here and try to get some range on him. easily lose this. More bones to adorn my heart. With all that open space, because the crystals are down, it makes this so much easier. I cannot stress that enough. Don't sleep on them, right? So right there, I could have just ignored it and worked on him. But it's a marathon here, not a sprint. Normally, you would need a veil right there, possibly, to get away from him. I didn't need it because there was no obstacles to hold me back. I could just walk out of it. Alright, this is looking good for us. Easily go sideways, no. but he is down. Okay, so that is the dragon fight. We'll go over here and everything as soon as I get him knocked out here. Well, he'll be crying for a moment, so we can just go ahead and go over it. Of course, we use Vampiric Brew, Witch Potion, Potion of Rage. Um, we bounced in between these three weapons, the Morning Star, Mortira's Lament, and the Endbringers. <clears throat> Pandemonious Stone on the Veil of Chaos, Glowing Moonstone on Spectral, and of course Ethereal Stone on the Phantom Aegis. I believe I switched out at some point. I can't remember. I think I had Wraith Spirit at the start and then switched out to this. And then our current gear is Grim Knight Chest Guard. Dracula's Grim Leggings, Boots, Gloves, and uh, yeah, we were going with Rogue Blood there, and the Solaris to get that supplemental. It's so funny, I, I just ran back after 
trying this like five, six times, just ran back and loaded up on all this stuff and then turned around and came in and knocked him out. That was a really good run. I, I, I did pretty good there. Could have done better, but that was still a good run. All right, let's uh, slurp this dude down. I don't know why I said it like that. There we go. Awesome possum. We'll take that Soul Shard Dracula. Now here's something cool about the Soul Shard of Dracula. It actually has 25% damage to vampires on it, which you'd notice on the other ones, Talzer's uh, Soul Shard that drops and uh, Adam's that drops. Um, they've only got 15% damage to vampires, so that's actually got uh, a higher amount. <clears throat> and would technically do more damage. So if somebody has already beaten Dracula um, and they have that soul shard, they could help you out. Okay, so that was it, guys. If this helped you out, slap that like button, subscribe, or just leave us a comment below. Harry and I will get back with you as soon as we're available. We have lots of content with tips like these peppered in and more videos like this one for the games we play here at The Project. We love having your company. Which doesn't have very many friends, and its current group is less than desirable. That would include you too, Harry. <sighs> Thanks for watching. See you later.